Hey guys, Crappie Kirby in the man cave today after a phenomenal day of fishing. Uh, I got to fish with my buddies Paul Smith and Joe Schiebel. Uh, had a great day. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that. But first, I'm going to, due to overwhelming response from the YouTube uh, viewers and subscribers, I'm going to show you uh, from a user's perspective, I'm going to put this on my cap and show you how to tie that loop knot that I use so religiously to help me give all those crappie free boat rides. Uh, then, after that, I'm going to tell you a little story real quick. Today, uh, we had our own little private fishing tournament between the three of us, Paul and Joe, and of course I spanked them, outfished them about five to one every fish, uh, and they got mad. They didn't know what I was doing different, and I'm going to share that secret with you, and I think you'll really enjoy it, you know, if you're the type of person that likes to outfish your friends. So I'm going to show you how to all do to do all of that uh, after I show you how to tie the loop knot. Here we go. Loop knot time. So what we're going to do is we're going to... I've got some high visibility line so that you can see it. And i got it strung on a B&M Crappy Wizard with a B&M Pro Reel. I'm going to show you... Oh yeah, I'd like to thank my new sponsor Crown Royal. Thank you very much, Lance Newton. I sincerely appreciate that. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna. I'm drinking a little of it now, so excuse the shaky camera work. Here's what we're gonna do. I'll show you how to do the loop knot. Okay. First thing you got to do, you got to decide what you're using. We're gonna use a jig minnow presentation. So first thing we're gonna put on is the minnow. Okay, and here's how you do it. All right, I'm going to do it here with a background. Oh, there's a background right there. That's a good background. So what you do is with these number two true turn hooks, you always don't put them in like this, okay, because your, your hook will be upside down, all right, and that minnow will fall off. Put them through the back, all right? Go through the back and run your line through there, and then just leave the line on there. And just let it fall down, all right? Then we're going to put a crappie magnet on below that, all right, so run the line through there. Third time's a charm, baby. And maybe fourth time. Hopefully you guys can see this better. There we go. Sucks getting old. My God. Instead of Crown Royal being a sponsor, I need an optometrist to sponsor me. All right, then I always tie on a bell sinker because I like my baits to stay in place. Now with the bell sinker, well, how I tie it on, I just do about three twists and then throw that through there. Okay, now the reason I do that and just cinch it real easy, just three and then through and just pinch it like that. Because if the bell sinker gets caught between a rock or in a hard place, if you put enough pressure, you'll see the lines giving on the knot and it'll come off. And it came off at the knot, you'll see, because it came unraveled. That way you don't use, lose your whole rig. You just lose the bell sinker, if the bell sinker. So I'll show you how to do that again. Just spin it about three times, push it through that loop, and then cinch it. All right? That just holds that in the place. Then come down first to your crappy magnet and say... Say the fish are three feet suspended off the bottom. Well, you just go up one foot, two foot, three feet, and that's where you want to put that bell sinker, or I mean that, that crappie magnet. And always allow yourself, gosh darn it, I've got a mess up here. Always allow yourself enough slack to do that. So let out a little bit more slack. I know everybody's going to be complaining like I'm dizzy as heck after your demo. But this is an experimental thing. So we want it about two and a half, three feet, all right? So pinch where you want it, all right? It's just on the line, free flowing. See that? So if that's where you want it, just pinch it right there. Then you take two fingers, and you got the, this is the line going to the pole, and there's the line going down to the bell sinker. All right, all you do is go around your finger once, twice, back around, and then hook all that stuff that's in between your fingers right there. All right, just hook it. Just hook it through there and don't hook yourself. See how the hook goes through there? Then once you have the hook through, just pull it through and leave it about an inch. You want to leave it about an inch because that's what, uh, that's how far those crappie can suck that back. Now, 
what you want to do is you've got that through there and you can rewind this and watch this lick your fingers I'm licking my fingers right now and pinch the base of that and let your fingers come out now we've got a little circle right there we got the bell sinker and we got the line here that goes to our pole our B&M pole then what you do is basically at the same time take both of them and pull them while pinching that knot and you'll notice if you pull them at the same time they'll dissolve at the same time and then boom a perfect loop knot that stays off so that when you're dragging that bell sinker around the bottom that jig stands up perfectly right at the depth that you've set it okay so that's just doing it one time now we're going to show you again how to do it we're going to come back and find that number two true turn hook here it is right here hopefully I won't have to re-edit this but I always put my I always put my minnow above my jig alright the reason I do that is because that way I have double the stability on the weight to keeping it down and I can drop that minnow down some people do it the other way but I like it this way so we want to put that minnow right above right above there so so you know it just rolls up and down there we're gonna go about a foot and a half two feet above it and that's where we want it so we pinch our fingers right there okay then we take give it enough slack to go around once twice and then when you come back around just spin that hook and hook through there and pull it through wet your fingers pinch where you want it we want it right there about an inch okay so that's what it looks like and then with both lines pull at the same time and voila and if you look with this setup it holds the hook upright you see how the hook is upright we don't want the hook down like this okay because our minnow would fall out when we cast we want the hook upright like that so the hook stands directly upright and I love to hook my minnows right through the lips so rewind that a couple times watch it and that is the perfect presentation the bell sinker is at the bottom if those fish are suspended anywhere from two to five feet above it bam we've got it right here covered or two to four feet I guess from the bottom we're going to be dragging that right through the hot spot there and they cannot resist it so that is a great presentation if you're dipping trees only go with one either go with a minnow or go with a crappie magnet or a jig all right because uh, what will happen is I'll give you an example of this so uh, let's say uh, there we go boom we're hung up on the brush pile we're hung up darn it we're hung up you know you're pulling you got a lot of pressure on it the beauty of this particular rig is even though we're hung up on the brush pile uh, we've got the weight of the bell sinker so if we just lower and give our rod tip a little bit of jiggle and a little bit of pop this 3 8 ounce that's the one I like to use and always use one that has a swivel on it it has enough weight to pull that crappie magnet head or to pull that number two true turn hook with a minnow on it it has enough weight to pull that through so you very rarely ever lose a jig or a or a hook you very rarely ever lose any setup so that's uh that's the rig hope you enjoyed it all right now i'm going to tell you uh the secret of how i outfished my buddies today you're going to love this all right i guarantee you're going to love this this will probably get a million views how to outfish your friends every time okay guys here's the secret that i use to outfish my friends basically four five to one uh, on crappie today uh, today we found them suspended once we honed them in on the Garmin uh, panoptics uh, it was just putting the baits right in front of their face and when we did that the bite was very light um, it wasn't as feverish as I like and I almost left the spot uh, but then I thought you know what I'm going to try some of the tube jigs that I rigged up last night now normally there's six or seven ways you can do a tube jig. Hopefully you guys all know how to do a tube jig. But if you have just a regular head, I like these crappie magnet uh, double cross heads. If you look, they have actually two uh, points that stick out so the jig heads or the jig bodies don't fall off as much. So you just run it through there, push it through there, bing, bang, boom. You got a perfect jig. All right, and it doesn't slip off as much because you've got two barbs that are holding that, that 
tube jig in place. Okay, that's one way to do it. Now, the other way to do it, and then I'll show you the trick that I did to outfish them, is with a tube jig and then the tube jig body. And this is how you correctly do it. If you notice, the hook actually has the um, weight already on it. And I'm using a 132nd ounce. Uh, I'd like to use a light one because I'm already using a 3 8 ounce to get the jig down to where I want, into the brush where I want, and to hold it where I want, especially if there's a lot of current. All right, That 3 8 ounce will hold that particular jig body perfectly still so those crappie can come up and thump it. But basically this is how you do it. You just simply run the jig into the body like that, and then you run the body onto the jig. I like to put a little spit on there, lubricate that puppy up so it doesn't tear the jig, it stays in there longer. Push it down and then pull the head over, and that is a perfect tube jig. Now, I wasn't a jerk. I rigged my friends up with the exact same color, and today we were using purple and with a little glitter flake white on the back because this is this imitates the exact shad color that are in almost 90% of the Kansas reservoirs. So this is an awesome color. If you don't have this color in your repertoire, go get some immediately. And then of course I like pink with a little glitter, a little chartreuse, a little refrigerator white, and then of course everybody's favorite, black and chartreuse. Here comes the trick. Here's what I did the night before. I rigged up two or three of these, and I'll do it on two of them so that you can see. All right, we've got one here with the crappie magnet head and one here with the tube body jig. All right, what I did the night before is I brought in my secret weapons. All right, and it is Berkeley Power Bait. Okay, Power Nibbles, whatever favorite color you, you like to use. I like to use silver because it's got a lot of glitter, puts a lot of glitter in the water, puts a lot of scent, a lot of odor, and it disperses uh, very quickly. And here is the trick, all right? CVS Pharmacy, get yourself an oral, uh, oh, there I just shot out some, shot out some power bait. Get yourself a, a kid's oral uh, measuring or medicine dispenser. And what you do is, don't put the whole bottle in there because it'll dry out. You want to keep these things moist so that you can squeeze them through that tube like Play-Doh. But just put like two or three or four in there. All right, seal that back up. Always make certain that you seal this up so you don't look at all that glitter on my hand. So you don't get glitter everywhere and so they don't dry out. So we've got four or five in there. Actually, we've got probably too many to do jigs, but I'll do a few more because I'm guiding tomorrow. But then basically all you do is push that in there and then push as hard as you can. And this stuff is super moist. And if you look, it starts to come out. Boom. And it comes out just like Play-Doh. Now what you do... We'll do it with the crappie magnet one first. Take the hard end of the actual tube and run it up there as far as you can and then just push as hard as you can. Just push, 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 push. And if you notice, I don't, hopefully you can see it, you can notice that that body is filling the whole cavity. Push hard. If, if you can't get any more in, what you can do is actually push down. What's holding this down? Like this, just like you're using a Play-Doh. Now, if you look at that body, it's completely full of crappie nibbles. You can even see it coming out the tail end. Now, here's the thing. You let this set overnight, and what happens to Play-Doh overnight? It hardens. It hardens in there, but, it, but the scent, it dissipates in water, so you always have something coming out of your jig, and you have so much more of the crappie nibbles in that jig body than just putting a regular little nugget on the hook. All right, so this is your friend. Make sure you go get one. Just go to your local pharmacy and say, hey, go through the drive-thru and say, hey man, I just was through there and uh, you forgot to give me an oral medicine dispenser for my kid and they'll just throw one in for free. Sorry about that, CVS. Here we'll do it with the tube jig. All right, now with the tube jig, when you go this route, you're not going to be able to get as much in because the weight is already in there. But basically, same thing. All right, blah, blah, blah. Stick it up in there and just push and fill that, I like to call it Play-Doh. Just fill it. You can kind of see it filling up. It's actually coming off there. Now, if you look at that body, I have almost two times as much of the crappy nibbles inside this tube body but and when I when I leave it overnight 
leave it out in the air, it'll harden. And that way I don't cast it off. Otherwise, you're just looking at basically, you know, a, a tube jig or something. A lot of people just use it where they just grab one nibble and they put it on a hook. Well, guess what? After this thing gets wet, you know, like that for scent, after this thing gets wet, nine times out of 10, boom, you cast it off. And then, then you have nothing. But with this particular technique, it allowed me to outfish my friends basically five to one. And the funny thing is, is they couldn't see it on the hook. They didn't know what I was doing differently. They just thought I was outfishing them. So anyway, there's your trickster, Crappy Kirby. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, subscribe to the channel. And I promise I'm going to get more cameras on the live scope stuff so you can see that video game fishing uh, through the Garmin live scope. But thanks again to my sponsors, Bass Pro Shop. B&M poles, crappie magnets, uh, and of course, oh, tracker boats. So thanks everybody. And Garmin. Yes, thank you. I think I got everybody. I'm out. Subscribe. Peace. God bless.